there's an epidemic of human trafficking taking place around the world. One place where people are targeted the most often, the World Wide Web. We're being joined by Call to Freedom Board Chair Kristen Torkelson, as well as the organization's Executive Director, Becky Rasmussen. They're here to fill us in on what signs to watch for and how we can help support victims of trafficking with their upcoming fundraiser breakfast. I think one of the coolest parts of your breakfast, really, it's a room full of people, and it's information that oftentimes they haven't heard, right? We think mm -hmm. we're so immune sometimes to these things. So what are you seeing right now that people need to be aware of? Yeah, um, human trafficking knows no boundaries. And so when we talk about human trafficking, it's either the use of force, fraud, or coercion for either sex or labor, and there has to be an exchange of money. Um, we worked on legislation recently in the past few years that removed forced fraud and coercion for youth. So it's exploitation. It's on our lines. It's on social media. It's on Instagram. Um, there are people paid to perp your kids and it becomes a business because it becomes about money. So um, what we want to do is really educate the community on how this is facilitated. The average age of a human trafficking victim is 11 to 14. So that's where they make the majority of their money because the demand is requiring that age or a particular type of victim. Oh, as parents of kids about that age, and I know Kristen, we've talked before, our kids used to be little, little, mm -hmm. and how, what's going through your head when you're learning more about this through your work? I know you're passionate about the organization too. I definitely am thankful to be a part of it because I've been able to be educated so that I can talk to my kids about it. We want to tell all parents about it so that they can talk to their kids. We don't want to scare them, but we want them to know that there's real, real people out there that want to hurt them. And so I'm just really thankful that um, Call to Freedom exists and that we have the opportunity to get youth help if they are being trafficked. What kinds of things do you talk to your kids about? We talk a lot about, um, you know, for example, my daughter wanted to be on Snapchat and we talk about how we acquire friends on Snapchat and how, mm -hmm. how do we make sure that we know that they're actually our friends and not somebody that's posing as a friend. So I, I think they're young and naive and they think if they see mm -hmm. a picture of a friend, they think, well, that's got to be my friend from fifth grade math. It, it can't possibly somebody be somebody posing as someone else. So we talk about that. And that doesn't feel as scary. It just feels like something they need to watch out for and talk to mom about. We've talked before about the ways that um, sometimes people are actually targeting somebody who's maybe going through something at home. Like they can be that person that steps in and says like, well, I care about you if, if mm -hmm. everything else isn't going well. What else are we seeing now? I know you mentioned that right now boys are having yeah. a particular you know, um, Traffickers also watch our trends. You know, we're out educating about girls and we're, we're talking about these other ways that trafficking are happening. They change their trends. And so the latest that we're seeing is boys, young boys. Um, the demand also is looking for boys, but also this trafficker, this business person is setting that tone. And so we're seeing young boys. Unfortunately, um, there aren't a lot of resources for boys. And so um, it sometimes doesn't end well. Um, They're asking him for pictures and they'll send them pictures and it could end up on the World Wide Web. Um, and these young kids don't know that. And then they begin to blackmail them. And that's not a good situation for any family to be in. It's hard enough for adults mm -hmm. to get themselves out of a situation yeah. sometimes that they didn't mean to get in and a kid's not equipped to probably deal with that. Yeah. So let's talk more about the breakfast itself because it mm -hmm. is a really good opportunity to get in front of a lot of people and share some very personal real stories. Yeah, absolutely. Tell Will me about this year. Yeah. 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 So the breakfast this year is on October 12th. Um, we'll be at the Sioux Falls Convention Center, which is just a great location for us because fortunately every year we've continued to grow. So yeah. um, we have enough space. We still have plenty of room for people to attend. You'll hear from survivors that talked to us last year. We've got some good news to share there, but we also want to talk about the increase in youth referrals we've seen at Call to Freedom. So there will be new information. Nobody will walk away empty handed and we just want to get as many people in front of us as we can. What do people tell you that they're most surprised to learn, especially at an event like the breakfast? Um, that it's happening here in South Dakota. I think a lot of people 
think rural community, we're not targeted, but when we are naive to what's happening, that's when we become targeted. And so education is really key, I think, for our community, for parents, um, for individuals. I'm fielding calls from Michigan, Florida, because there's a lack of programs within across the United States. And so when that's happening, that's a vulnerability. And so it is happening in South Dakota because we have our 90 and 29 going through. Um, and then also we have reservations and rural communities. And so it makes us a prime target. What do people tell you? I know that you come to the event every year, you're very involved in it, but you also bring a lot of people that maybe haven't been exposed mm -hmm. and moms like yourself, what do they tell you mm -hmm. after they get this information? I think the misconception that I hear amongst moms is that they think it's happening with the adult population. When Becky talked about the stat of the, the age of the kids that are actually being drawn mm -hmm. in, it's happening younger and younger. And so I think that's the biggest thing that people take away from that breakfast and makes them wanna, Hold their kids a little tighter at night. And you're continuing to offer more trainings and opportunities for people to learn more for ways they can be involved, ways that they can protect, you know, maybe areas of the community that are more at risk. Yeah, you can go to our website, calltofreedom.org, under events. We have a November training for the community, and we're really our target because we've seen such an increase in youth referrals. We've added multiple staff to this area just so that we can get to kids before they're perpetrated, equip families to know how to combat this, but also to have those conversations like Kristen talked about with their kids. So go to our website, and we have a, a parent training in uh, November that you can sign up for, and they're all free to the community. What does it mean to you to hear those survivor stories? It makes everything that we do worthwhile, um, especially the staff at Call to Freedom. They work hard, long hours. Um, to hear them be successful and be reunited with their families, it's the most rewarding gift that I could ever be given. So it's very rewarding. And what's your hope when people attend this year? Uh, that we can someday stop this. Um, for us, it's, you know, yes, it is a fundraiser. We do need to continue doing the work. But if we can prevent one, two, three kids from falling into this and equipping them to not be subject to this, that's worth it to us. Well, thank you very much for all the work thank you're you. doing and for the work with the breakfast and for being here to tell us about it today. Thanks, Ashley. Thank Appreciate you. It.